started about three years ago. We both loved teaching and we thought well, let's start with educating kids as we didn't really have the capacity to take in loads of animals and we thought that that make a bigger impact right then and there so we started an educational program at one of the school we met at. Well it was a scary moment. It was scary for us but uh, we said yeah we'll take in some cats, we'll take in some dogs yeah. and that's where we started. It started out as a good, a good hobby. And um, yeah, took it from there. Went to a shelter um, that ended up closing because they were selling the cats and dogs to the meat trade. We wanted to help the local shelter, and then we found mm. out they're selling the dogs and cats to the slaughterhouses at night. So they eventually got shut down, and that's when we saw meat for the dogs and cats. Um, so yeah, in the long run, to stop cat and dog meat trade, yeah. it's not going to happen tomorrow, but it needs to start somewhere. It's not the trade itself, it's stolen pets and what they do with them after. And you know people who have had their pets stolen? Yes. Clothes. Oh. Yeah, I guess the reason why, oh, the why we do oh, yeah, things oh, yeah. is because of the dog and cat and trade. I think, yeah, also firstly for people to know that the trade is real. A lot of people still think that doesn't happen here, it's okay, if my animal goes out it won't happen to me. Um, but it is very real, there are cat traps around, dog snatchers, and um, people's animals go missing daily. The dog meat industry is a little bit bigger, yeah. but people don't know about the cat meat industry, which is just as big, there's just more cats. Because it is, how someone explained it the other day, it's not that people can keep their houses closed here. It's all on the street and it's open so pets go missing so easily. It might not be that all stolen, but running around might be by a bike. Um, it's impossible to keep them inside unless they're tied up. Or put That's in a why cage. I understand like people let their dogs run around because they don't want to tie them up. We don't want to tie them steal up. Them. Yeah. So it's yeah, sorry, it's a, it's, it's, a it's, catch twenty two. Yeah, it's challenging. A lot of people that we've rehoed animals to that understand how it works around here is that they say that they've lost a dog or a cat when they were younger and um, they remember it as if it was yesterday. Yeah, we encourage them to speak up about it. They don't know that we're an organization that can help. I think a lot of the Vietnamese, it's not that they don't love their pets a lot of the time, it's they don't really know how to take care of them. Like, so through education, really make a lot of difference in lives for both the people and the animals. So I'd love to see like that continue and having more Vietnamese get involved because in reality they don't want to listen to us. They need to be learning and like accepting from the people their culture who, with understanding. So yeah, as educators we know that children will change the future for animals. Dried dog food too so it looks like that when it's all done. You want some? <laughs> right now we have 25 to 30 volunteers that each commit three hours a week, which is amazing. They have to commit for three months. And then they help us with daily things, taking care of the animals, cleaning, feeding, help us with education. Yeah, our volunteers actually make it go around. So we have a, an international vet that comes from Ho Chi Minh once a month and she works with a local vet, Dr. Yang, and we're trying to um, control the overpopulation of cats in Da Nang. Um, so we get to do a lot of rescues and we just started a program with the Hyatt. So we're trapping their animals, well their, their cats mostly, and um, vaccinating them against rabies so that people know they go and stay there that um, their, their animals are spayed and neutered and also rabies free. <laughs> Lion or pet? No. We've expanded recently to encourage more Vietnamese volunteers. So that is a big program we're doing. Like social media with them, translators, and just getting the community more involved. Mm -hmm. We're also doing a foster training program and um, teaching them how to take care of animals. So we can't take in all of them, so we're having a network where they can take in animals and help us with it. Um, our adoption program is going really well. People are starting to understand more why there's a need to adopt um, rather than just going to someone online and buying a, a purebred cat or dog. 
people starting to see the need. I love watching the dogs just heal and like learn to trust Golly. people again. A lot of them come in here sick and abused with issues that we don't even like really know about. But just seeing the change and how much more they heal and become happy and all that's very really rewarding. We always think we need to make a better world for our children's good, but really we just need to make better children for our world and I really believe Paz is doing just that. Yeah, we're only growing and expanding because of the community. One day I will go back here and meet the board Yes, it's the promise. <laughs> It's overwhelming, like the amount of support we get internationally and locally. Yeah, people are very supportive, and I feel like if we ask for something, we normally get it. If it's cat food, dog food, litter, um, deworming service, I feel like it doesn't matter yeah, what we're, uh, a new wheelchair, people, they listen and they give us what we need. It's amazing. If it's an online donation, we'll send a thank you email with photos of um, what their money is going towards. If it's for a a vaccination that month, or a spay and neuter, or a new wheelchair, people know exactly where their money's going. Oh, they can yeah. be to our volunteers. Oh, I don't think wow. we can do anything without our volunteers, and that's that's very recent. Uh, especially thank you to Julie. Oh, Julie. She started it all. An amazing Julie. lady who, like, we didn't have the time because we do work full, we do work jobs, and we're both teachers, and so if it weren't for the volunteers, we wouldn't be able to work as much and this would not have been possible at all. Volunteers and their supporters, their donators. So thank you Go guys. Back.